This building guidance was a project to co-create guidance with schools for schools of the future. What can we learn from others who've gone through the experience? We've laid out six case studies on the lessons learned, good and bad, to support other schools going through the process. This is an interesting text because it's been co-created with practitioners, with users, using our own research findings from Design Matters to create a, a document which will be of value to head teachers particularly as they try and think through the issues in designing a new school. There's an assumption that all you need is, as it were, a square off box and that one size will fit all. It doesn't. How are you going to expect teachers to teach and how the space will flow for that to happen? For me, that is the vital part that I think that you really need to get that understanding and that's got to be driven by your philosophy and your pedagogy. We had a vision for project-based learning. What drives that is group work and how people can work together. But you can have lots of issues that you don't know. And I think, you know, with modelling and, and the sound, we had we caught a cold. There are some issues that have only come up since we've had full occupancy of the building. For example, how some of the sound travels, um, and back, general background noise and how that affects some children. I've not found a student that says they enjoy being in a big, loud environment. They all enjoy somewhere quiet where they can concentrate. I think even to have a quiet space that as a teacher you can rotate children into for different parts of lessons would be really helpful. I feel like I would put in a bigger English space. There's three separate groups. One of the groups is like really loud and if we had like a bigger space everyone could have their own noise and we'll know how to control it. The best design schools are schools in which the people who are going to occupy it have a very clear view about what it is they want to do as practitioners. If it's going to be a reasonably radical design, they're going to have to learn how to do that work. It's not a seamless transition. You've got to be able to learn how to manage that kind of environment in order that the best possible outcomes are achieved. Teachers want to use the school design as an educational tool. School building budgets are very small but it needs the research and the time and the understanding to get it right for students because it impacts them day in, day out.